I was amazed whenever I did research for this particular video. There are between 60 and 70 million people in the United States that have some sort of digestive disorder. Most of them heartburn, acid reflux, or GERD. $123 million a year is spent towards doctors and medication for these disorders. And over-the-counter medicine, over $4 billion. To understand how you can overcome these health conditions, first we need to know a little bit about the anatomy and physiology of the digestive system. From the mouth to the rectum is a long tube that has different curves, different bulgings, but it's basically the same muscle. And inside the muscle, there is a lining, this light pink color here. It provides a slippery surface to move food and chyme along more efficiently. And it also helps in the prevention of acid reflux. Where the esophagus and the stomach meet, there is a sphincter muscle. The sphincter muscle is very much like a rubber band. It's a muscle that closes. You have one at the rectum and at, at the mouth. So you can pucker your lips to give a kiss. That is a sphincter muscle that allows you to do that. If you look at these two illustrations, the muscle wall of the esophagus and stomach are the same in both of these. The sphincter muscle has the same amount of tension. The fluid on this side can easily pass through that sphincter muscle, while the one on the right cannot because the mucosal lining is thick enough that the muscle can pinch off the opening. Now if you would take this animation and flip it upside down, you can see when the stomach churns, it would be hard for the acid to go up past that muscle, while the one on the left very easily the acid could shoot up. There are several things that weaken this mucosal lining. pH imbalance is probably the number one. The pH can come from drinking coffee, tea, soda, milk products, or eating a lot of proteins. Stress can cause acid to develop in the body very quickly. Then there's acid within the stomach itself. Poor digestion in the stomach, a lack of hydrochloric acid, can cause fermentation of the food, which produces a different kind of acid. That is a type of acid that typically is responsible for the acid reflux. Most people have acid reflux, have it because they don't have enough hydrochloric acid. You could take a healthy person, give them antacids on a regular basis, and they can actually develop acid reflux from taking that, in part because of the poor digestion. Because of that acid, the body can steal more readily the nutrients in the esophagus for other parts of the body. Antacids, in my opinion, should be taken off the market. Things that I would do to improve the health of this lining would be to eat alkalizing foods. 60% of my diet being raw vegetables, and if I'm not diabetic, 20% of it being fruits. Then I personally, although I cannot prescribe, a tablespoon of slippery elm and four ounces of water, mix well, I put it mine in a jar and I shake it, and then take it in between meals. You can take it between one and four times a day. It's best taken between meals, away from fatty acids and medications because the slippery arm also absorbs as it coats. If you have a problem with the stomach or the intestines, you can take into capsule form. But if we're working on the esophagus and acid reflux, it's best to drink it, even though it's a little bit thick. Um, doesn't taste bad, but, but the texture of it is not pleasant. It's sad to know that 60 to 70 million people a year suffer needlessly 
with acid reflux when they can just tweak their diet and add a little slippery home.